Adura. Adura. Once again, let's turn our Bible to the book of Genesis, chapter 24, verse 26 to 27. Our focus at this hour is why you must be a divine mercy carrier. Reason why you need divine mercy. Where we are asked to read Genesis chapter 24, verse 26 and 27. And the man. That man is Eliasa, the servant of Abraham. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. And said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master, Abraham, who has not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. Where we have just read, it confirmed the fact that Abraham lived a blessed life because of the multitude, because of the abundance of divine mercy of God. So, a man destitute of divine mercy will live a destitute life. It's good for me to repeat myself at this junction. If any man is destitute of divine mercy, he's going to live a destitute life. Because he said, I thank God who did not left destitute my master Abraham. And we know Abraham was a great person. Another way to say it, is to say that a man that is death, that is bankrupt of divine mercy will live a bankrupt life. So he cannot be a blessed person. So you see many people that are bankrupt. They are distressed. I want to encourage such a person that what he needs to do is to cry for divine mercy. You know, a life that is enriched with divine mercy will live a rich life. A life blessed with divine mercy we also live a blessed life. There's no controversy about that. You know, Jacob also have the same testimony as we have been told in Genesis chapter 32, verse 10. He said it clearly that I am not worthy of the list of all the mercies and all the truths which thou hast shown unto thy servant. He's talking about himself. For with my staff I passed over this Jordan and now I am become. Two burns. So what he was saying, which we all know, that when he was running to a, a Laban in Iran, leaving his father, he had only one staff. There was nothing. 
he was destitute. When he was crossing the uh, river Jordan, or he was, when he was crossing Jordan, but when he was coming back, it's now said he has two bands. In other words, they have become rich through the mercy of God. So in our previous message, we have talked last we have talked about three reasons why you must have divine mercy. We are going to discuss seven. So right now we want to discuss the remaining ones. So number four, why you need divine mercy, why you must be a carrier of divine mercy. Divine mercy nullifies all the lawful causes and bondages that have potential to deprive you of the blessings of God. When we talk about nullify, I'm talking about the ability to render impotent, to null and uh, declare null and void those causes, those bondages you have found yourself that has the potential to resist or to deprive you of the blessings of God. Before we proceed, there's one thing I've mentioned which everyone must understand. I talk about lawful causes, lawful bondage. Can you give me Genesis chapter um, 29? You know, sometimes it's good for you to go back home and discuss with your parents what happened at your birth. You're the genesis of your life. It's better for you. Or the history of where you are born. Emma, we put it by mirror. Oh, man, let her. Oh, she don't know that. Ko para si le. Lord of Baba, tabi yare. Ko lo bere. We onto shaju. Tabi to shale. Ni ba tabi o. Tabi onto rama. Ipiti agbebi o. Because all of not all of us have the privilege of having our parents as Christians. Not all of us have the privilege of having our background from a Christian family. Even if they are Christian, they have not really done what they ought to do, even after becoming a Christian or becoming Christian. Genesis chapter 29. Quickly, quickly, let us look at it because this is very fundamental to what we are discussing. Sorry, I mean Genesis chapter 9. There's a story there that I want to bring to your knowledge at this moment. I just want to appeal to every one of us listening to this message that they must take part in the partition that is going to end this message at this moment. Because when you are talking of divine mercy, it's very central to your life. Like I said earlier on, the background of divine mercy, you live your life in bankruptcy. 
gẹgẹ bi mo ti so saju pe to ba sa lai ni tabi ko ma ni to anu atoke wa igbe aye ai to na do ma pe look at genesis chapter 9 you want we we genesis story ke so you all know the story but i want to bring a point home when we talk about lawful causes lawful bondage am i tan yi da da sugbon bo fe pe akesi wa si o ti an pe ni egun tabi ide to to si ni you see in, i will start to read from verse 18 now the son of Noah, who went out of the ark, number one, Shem, Am, and Japheth. And one man knew at your dad in the ark, in the ark, in the Shem, at the ham, at the Japheth. And Am was the father of Canaan. Am was the ni, Am was the ni Baba Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah. I want better one, you know, man, Noah. And from this, the whole earth was populated. Lati you know or, what happened before? Lati or don't want their pay for, for that. They go by and now began to, be a, to be a farmer and he planted the vineyard. No, I see, but see, she had been. What's it going by, Jara? Then he drank of the wine and was drunk and became uncovered in his tent. Can you imagine that? What's it, moon? They know what it's wine enough. What's it, moon? I'm not I'm not to talk about drinking alcohol or not, but this is a person that prepared it and you see what happened. Like I had in the Sunday school a very sad message about a woman selling a product, but you never take out of that product because the product he was selling, he knew that if you take part of it, it's going to harm ah can you imagine that evil 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 behavior some of us we have things that will be a peril to us and we are not dealing we are not differentiating ourselves from them e wo nti okun ri se nbi fun ara re wo na lo fo wa ara re se ara re o baba ti pe awon gbo ninu eko jo ise mi obirin kan to nta oja kan ti e pe o nkan o mo pe ise buku bi ise bi lo se so he drunk and look at what happened. He became naked. If he left for him alone, it could have been very good. Some of us, what we are doing now is that we are causing generations to come after us. Look at this young man. The name was Am, one of the children of one of the children of uh, Noah. Either innocently or ignorantly, or he was very, very playful. And that is why some of you, you have to, those of you are very young, you have to be very, very careful in what you do. Boyo Manton Sheni. Don't make jest of people anyhow. Don't make of people jest of people anyhow. When I was in the secondary school, we have we normally pass to a secondary school, we have a, a layman. But the man was humbleless. So we were just passing as young children were passing to school. And one of us just saw the man trying to crawl out. And the time making jest of this man. The man just uttered a word. He said, you this child, you don't like your mother. You what don't is? like your parents. And he mentioned so in some words, causes upon that boy. How brilliant, though that boy was brilliant, promising, but that was the end of the boy. Just be adjusting. Oh, mama, well, what's it? Jack, well, you're white, you're a whole logo. She won't be my eyes, it's a bonus, you know. I hear, oh, no, man, you know. Careless jesting, careless talking, careless behavior. A fatio talk, a tea, what you talk, that provoke causes. A late old man with one daddy. Some of us children 
you, you make jests of your parents, of your father. It may not be as, as red as you are. He may not be able to speak Queen English like you. The man you met, if he's older than you, but the way you relate with him or her is very can be very dangerous sometimes. You are living with a couple now. You are not, they are not your father. They are not your mother. But you know the way you relate with them. You know what you do for them. Okay. Uh, maybe you are just uncle. You are just uh, brother. You know the way you relate to the wife of your brother. So it, 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 it cut across us there of our life. That many of us we take this carelessly, we talk carelessly, we act carelessly, even in the church. So this boy, um, he was exposed to danger. And he was not wise enough. In verse 22. And I'm the father of Canaan. What did he do? He saw, read and read louder. He saw the nakedness of what? Of his father. And told his two brothers outside. Can you imagine that? Amu. Baba Kenani, Kilo Se, Ori Ho Baba Re, Osi Sofa, Wala Konre, Beji Lode, Wotose. Why should you allow the mistake of somebody else to enjoy you? Kilo De To Vite Ke As Je Ne Kan, Koko Ba Wo. It's not your own concern. He said, Tok Ha Ra Ra. So he saw the nakedness of the father, a drunker. Ori Ho Baba Re, O Moti Para. And instead of him to run away, he made jest of the father and go and jest with other two brothers outside. Come and see Baba. Oh, look at him. He has got drunk. Look at the way he behaved. I saw this. I saw that. Oko ko fi Baba se ye terun. Lo ba tun ta wa ra kun re lo. Lo tun pe ye ye to wa lo pe. Wa wo Baba o. O ti ma mo para lo ti. But look at verse 23. Remember, I'm talking about lawful causes that divine mercy can nullify. Because we live at a precarious time now when we don't go deep and deeper on spiritual matters. We just come to the house of God. You have some motivational speech, uh, speeches, you have something, you appeal to your emotion, and then you go back, oh, I have had a nice time. Hey, you can confess, you can profess. That is good, nothing bad in it, but your knowledge, your deep knowledge about the word of God is very, very important to guide your life. So he went outside. And told the two brothers. But look at the wise man. In verse 23, who knows that they must not see the nakedness of their father? But Shape and Jaffel took a garment, laid it on both their shoulders, and went back and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned away, and they did not see their father's nakedness. Mommy, uh, please get me that your what do you call it? Your handkerchief or that small clothes that you have. Once he boy, oh, Baba, 
Now you must have understanding at this hour. What is Gogo who? That is, they didn't say garment. English word has no word for Gogo who. <laughs> That's a limitation of language. Of clothing that have been made in a special way traditionally. Now, Gogo Wu will never miss a target once it is worth laid. Gogo Wu will never miss a target once it is worth laid. So, maybe those of you in English, you go and look for the meaning of Gogo Wu. So, what these two brothers did, they walk with their back to the house or to the room where the father laid naked. What they did was they did like this. And though they are not seeing what is in their back, because they must not see the nakedness of their father. So they just took the gogowu or the garments and then they just throw it like this. Either on the father, the way that will wake the father. So, that, will, that will wake the father up. But the fact that it is meant to cover the what? The nakedness of what? Of the father. So that those that Gogo wood in Yoruba was used to cover the nakedness of the fathers. So what happened in verse 24? That's where we are going. So Noah awoke from his wife and knew that his younger son had done him. What the younger son has done to him? So now, may, I, may, I, may I pray for you? What will enjoy you? Your eyes will never see it. What will enjoy you? Your mouth will never say it. It is not all what you see that you see. Your eyes will not that. It is not all what you see that what you see. It is not what your mouth asks you to say. As you have asked in the Amherst Stars meeting today, that you say there are certain things you will not say. Even though you see, you know. He said, Go to you, Rebari, no bother, Bori. He said, Go to tell no, let over there, so he goes or sit up, both in one way, or just me learning. But come here, what you have to do about it, a bit of ma, or kind of man. And that is the danger of the generation that we have now. When we talk about freedom, freedom, let him talk. He can talk. Don't copy him. Let him do what he likes. He's walking the path of danger. So, what now happened? You can now see when this man woke up from his wine. Let us see. Are you there with me? Are you there with me? Then he said, Cause be what? Canaan. Who is Canaan? Who is Canaan? Eh? Talk to me. The father of the son of who? Who is Canaan? Who is Canaan? Look at it very well. I see some of you, you do not understand what we are saying. How many children, how many sons uh, did Noah has? Ham, who saw the father of who? Ham, the father of who? Canaan. Who saw the nakedness of his father? Who oh, talk to me? Now, when this man was cursing, whom did he curse? So, who is Kenan? Talo Foriko. Amu, Olobi Kenan, Loma. Amu, Lori, who, Babare. 
I don't know whether I'm driving home a point. Am I driving up a point? We are talking why you need divine mercy. I'm sorry, I didn't I say it is divine mercy that nullify. The love what causes a bandage that has the potential to deprive you of your words, of God's blessing. It's only mercy. Divine mercy. So what now happened to this boy? It was not Canaan that saw the nakedness. It was his father. Look at what is the cause. Can you, can you read the cause louder for everybody to hear? Read it along with me. Want to go? A servant of servant. He shall be to what? To his brethren. Can you imagine that? I pray that God will give you understanding. God will really give you understanding. What is happening in your family? What you yourself are experiencing? Even though you call yourself Christian, but you are not wise. Oh, You do not have understanding. Oh, ni And I why the scriptures, as I said, who is as what? As a fool as my servant. Because we do not walk with understanding. We are just beating the bush all around. We refuse to go straight to the source of our problem because of lack of understanding. And I'm not blaming some of us, though you are the one solving the consequence, because we do not want to know, we want to just hear what appeal to our emotion. Because of what we are experiencing, we do not want to know, we want to just hear what appeal to our emotion. So, so, to be what? Servant or what? Servant. To who? To spread it. So sometimes, we, we know that we have been born very well. You see sometimes, five children, you see one of them will just become servant of others. You don't know. Reason why. Or you just see a generation. The same thing happening to them. You will not be able to know. Because something was wrong. So we are what? Yes. And we do not bother to ask for divine mercy. He nani, o to kan se le sina ni pe o re o di ran se fun awon iran se wipe ni gba miran a o kan ri pe awa ta bi omo awon eyan to bi omo pe boya mo marun lo bi okan dinu won yo kan je ru fa won igbe re ni somebody that rebuke you chastise you tell you what is right how do you look at him don't you think don't you say it's your enemy because your father beat you. And you now say, well, if I myself, I can beat you. Your father cursed you. I myself, I can return it. You have provoked a curse upon your life. Like you have been taught this morning, they gave you money and you're supposed to return the change and you just find something else to cook up so that you will not return the change. You don't know that you have sown a seed that you are going to reap tomorrow. Your lifestyle is not just like that. There's a reason for that lifestyle you are living. Loveful costs. Love bondage. Many of us, we don't know. 
But when you know, you don't do anything about it. Hey, may I speak to the life of somebody? You can hear me now. Deliverance will come your way. Yeah. Oh, that amen is too weak to what we are talking about. If you know the gravity of what God has revealed to you today, that is enough for you this week. To go and walk on the prayer and fasting you are doing is enough for you. To ba ma po se wu wo to asire Olorun si paya fo laaro yi a we at adua to ngba o ti to fun. That Lord I need divine mercy. Pe Oluwa mo ni lo anu atoke wa. I need divine mercy. Mo fi anu atoke wa. And where you know you can get any information, any clue to the type of life that you are living. Do you know that it is better for you? If I ask you now, whosoever is the son or the daughter of second wife, raise up your hand. I will see hands up here. Am I communicating? Is it, do you know whether that first wife is happy with your mother? So, am I communicating? Yeah. Oh, am I communicating with somebody? I'm just giving us common one that most of us know. Boy, I know, man. Say, yeah, I'm not going to be on here. So, fair, yeah, let me book and say, let me walk on all the money. You know, you know all these things yourself. And you are living your life as if, oh, you came from heaven straight. Book, come on, you know, one of my friends. Oh, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be on the table, say. I get upset when you tell some people, give your life to Jesus. I don't know who I, I would have been today if not because I've given my life to Jesus. I've eaten the same food with somebody who did not survive. I survived. If not because of Christ. I have been told that if I go to university and I come out, it is that that's the price of my life. What is so for me? You bet in balance capacity, be bat in the bay, then walk by me. But to the glory of God, you go alone. That is eight, that is nine is going now. I've been in university, I've come out of university. It is not by power, it is not by mind, it is by the Spirit of God, it is by divine mercy. And some of us are living a careless life. What will Canaan do to get out of this lawful cause and bondage? You keep on like that. And no wonder we are talking of Canaan. Oh, that the, the people there has to be wiped away. Go and look at the history of this Canaan. Except God intervened in their life. Have you heard the story of Reuben before? Genesis chapter 49. You see, I, I will continue to repeat it. Out of the three essential uh, trademark for a blessed life, that we attract a blessed life, divine mercy is what? It's a very central one. Look at it, it's in the center. In the center. Minus it from the two, you are nothing. Are you there in Genesis chapter 49? Reuben was the firstborn of who? Eh? Of Jacob. Reuben is only a copy of Korean football. Given back to him by who? Leah. Can you remember? Leah. Jacob did not intentionally. Wanted to marry Leah. Can you remember the story? I look at what happened. He did something. And then it was under a love course. Reuben, thou art my first word, but my might 
and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Is that not beautiful? Grace. But look at what the father pronounced upon him. Children, the Lord will deliver you. You need to start behaving well. You know, I'm still a son to my mother. And I see some people that are like father to me. I need to go extra mile to meet their needs. It's not convenient for me, but I have to. Because I understand spiritual laws. It's either you are natural and reap what is natural, or you are supernatural and reap what is supernatural. It depends on where you want to walk. But I can't, I can't see you listening to words of God, especially in this auditorium, and you say you are still walking in the natural. Or you are hearing me. We need to give you sad teaching that must shape your life. If you rebel against it, that is another problem upon your life. Because if you have not had it, you have not had it. But now you are hearing it. And you see back, you see go back to your normal life. It means you are the one doing yourself. Am I communicating with somebody this morning? Am I talking to somebody? I don't expect you to laugh at me. I'm happy that you have found your faces. But let, us, let me assume me that you are not speaking against me. So let me believe that you is, the word is sinking to your body, to your heart. And you are going to take action on it. So look at it, look at the person beautifully designed by position being the first child. When he comes, and in the name of freedom, I have my body, I can do anything I like. But look at what the father said to him. In verse 4. What did he say? Where is it? He said, Unstable as what? As water. Thou shalt not excel. Do you know it is not like I've said it earlier on? It doesn't mean your father will say it. But what you have done will provoke it. Oh, you do this. You do this. You may not talk. But already you have provoked something upon your life. So when Ruben was doing what he was doing, it didn't know the implication. But look at it, the father wants to pass away. We are conducting deliverance for somebody. And they said the person who caused this thing to be upon him is already dead. And are we going to the mortuary now and bring in uh, to the cemetery and bring the person out? Or key. When they did what they did, they took the key and go and lock it up in the tree. And it's dead. How will it cut down the tree? I have an urgent urge within me to point my hands to you that divine mercy will work for you. Amen. So look at the father now said this to him. It must come to pass. Because he came through the father to the world. If the father had blessed him, he would be blessed. And that's the reason why you must be doing things that will make your parents, will make your leader, 
make your employer, we make your pastor, we make your wife, we make your to bless you. Look at what he did, he trespassed. Because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, then defilest thou it. He went up to my coach. That is all. So forever you shall not exist. How many times have you heard of Ruben? I will speak it this morning. Are you hearing me? It's not sweet. It's not sweet. But it is better for you to hear it. And once you hear it, you make the amendment. You are going to see how the crooked way is going to be straightened. It is true, you quote uh, the book of Isaiah. Every mountain shall be leveled up. Every valley shall be raised up. Every crooked way shall be straightened. Obedience first. Okay. And do the things, do the things right. I'm speaking to somebody at this moment who will leave this place or who will hear this message and make rest and go and make restitution. He will go and make restitution. Somebody worked for us for years and uh, he was committed with something great, valuable, and because the Christian we didn't bother about the accounts or right. what is going on. And we did not know that he has sitting deep into us. But several years when he has left, he came back and he told, she told us what he did. I said, because you have done that, God has forgiven you. I'm expecting somebody will go back home today. I'm expecting somebody is going to do restitution. Because you need divine mercy. If you are qualified to be punished and the punishment will go on. You can meet to your husband, you can meet to your wife, you can meet to your father. And if you have lost your father, kneel down and pray to God. That this is what you have done. And if you still have those things you have done, please return them. And so he said, You shall not excel. So don't just be quoting everybody shall be exalted, and every mountain and spirit shall be made. God bless you for, for giving me that scripture. And that is the reason why that is what I'm talking about. That even we pastors, we are not uh, excused from committing this error or making these people to commit error. Just confess. Once you confess, that is all. Give us the passage again in Isaiah chapter 41 or 2. Yes? Let me read it. The scripture says, How can you be in sin and say what? Grace to what? To abide. That is what we are talking to us. That we must know what we ought to do. Our life must go beyond mere confession. We must do what we're supposed to do. I'm not worried about confession. I'm not saying that that's at his part. But it must come out of a pure life. It must come out of a, 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 a righteous life. Purity must be the basis of your confession. Do this right. Get, first of all, get yourself delivered. 
from love causes and bondage. So it is only divine, divine, divine mercy that can only nullify the lawful causes and the love bondage that has the potential to prevent the blessing of God coming upon you. I have told us about Abraham in Joshua chapter 24 that Joshua, Terah, the father of Abraham, was an idol worshiper. And then, according to Deuteronomy chapter 6, can you give us that? Verse 14. That whosoever is an idol worshiper is under the wrath of God. He said, Ye shall not go after other gods. That is the wrath of God. Of the gods of the people which are around about you. Are you now serving other gods around you? Oh, that of your pastor is on his two hands. Oh, that is old days as an old school pastor. Ah, he said, I should not do this, I should not do that. He said, This is what I should be doing. Oh, he said, You should not serve God that is around you. That's your wife, that, that's your friend that is speaking, is cancelling you. You see a Christian? That ah, you don't do anything to man, oh. you are, And then you yield there to it, you are serving a God. Because you don't know the God is serving. And same thing with some of us husbands. I walk We pass up, we are not left behind. I will If you do this, if you don't do this, if you do that, if you do ah, you will not see people. Are you to serve people? Do you want to listen to the voice of people like Saul? You compromising the anointing and the call of God upon your life? And then you are dethroned in heaven. So he said, you should not serve other gods. So Terah, the father of Abraham, was serving other gods. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you. Now why should they say they should not serve other gods? He said, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee all the face of the earth. So whosoever is serving other God is under the wrath of God. And so by the principle I've read this morning from Ham's case in Genesis chapter 9, the Reuben case in Genesis chapter 49, Reuben case in Genesis chapter 49, and you can now see, if not divine mercy, Abraham, the son of Terah, he too will have been under the wrath of God and the hunger of God. But mercy worked for him. And that is the reason why in Genesis chapter 24, verse 27, that the mercy of God was visible in the life of Abraham. And that is why the master could say, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who has not left death to my master of his mercy. And it's true. I've been in the way the Lord led me to the house of my master brethren. Can you see that? Can you see what master? Can you see what mercy does? 
emi wa lona pe oluwa si to me si ile idile oluwa mi e wo the problem you are having with your children may not be may not be the problem of the child isoro ti opo ni pelu omo re o le ma je omo yen lo fa it may be your only problem that the child the children is some have suffering from o le je pe isoro re pon pele lo omo yen na because if this man has not been under the master that enjoyed the mercy of god God will not have proper his way. Am I communicating with somebody? Ni, ni tori, and he gave me testimony. Ni tori ran sai, ka pe ko sise pelu en to ngba nu anu Olorun ni ti je Ibrahim Oluwa re, o ngan Oluwa e ba ti to na re bo ti ni e. So parents, eyin o bi, you have to straighten your path. O ni lati to ipa re so that you will not mortgage the future of your children. Ki o mo ba ta ojo wa jo omo re. And also mortgaging your own life. Ki o si ta yara re na. You children you don't need to mortgage your life oh ni lo ko ta ye re because of what you are doing to the parents ni tori ta se so bi pastor you don't need to you don't need to mortgage your calling and you only swag to oh ni lo ko ta ipe re the blessing that god has pushed to you pe ipo ti olorun fi fun o because of what you have done you mortgage that ni tori to se o ti wa ta church members ladies you don't need to mortgage your future don't need to call the blessing of God from you because of what you are doing either to your pastor or to somebody else so what we are saying at this point why you need divine mercy it is only divine mercy that can nullify that can render importance that can declare none avoid all the lawful causes and bandages that have the potential to deprive us of the blessings of God and I said this morning that that mercy will begin to work for you a better amen to that I said that mercy will begin to work for you in the mighty name of Jesus let me mention one more and then we close divine mercy why, you, why, do you need, why do you need divine mercy divine mercy open doors of blessing to you divine mercy open the doors of blessing to you in Isaiah chapter 60 we have read it several times let us go to, back to it you can see how divine mercy worked for the Israelites what divine mercy brought to them look at verse 10 are you there? the sons of foreigners shall build up your walls can you say amen to that? it's very to say that and their king shall minister to you if you, understand, if you understand that scripture, you have a more resounding amen. I read it again. The sons of Renan shall build up your walls. And their king shall minister to you. Amen. But what we cause it? What we cause it? That's where we are going. I want my lady, your mouth, I want my one, you to say, and say, for killing your fat, your believer. He said, For in my rod, I struck you. Oh, we pay the Tori. But in my favor, I have mercy on you. And because I'm no longer wrought with you, because my angry assist from you, what am I going to do now? This God taught himself. He said, therefore, your gate shall be open continually. I would not like to spend much time on this, but I want to read this scripture to you and you respond to it. He said, because my wrath has now gone. 
I'm now generous to you. I have favor to you. And I say I've taught us mercy is a product of favor. And because I now favor you, and I have mercy on you. One thing that this mercy will do for you. Your gate shall be open how many times? How many days? How many months? Shall be open what? Continually. Your gate will not be open for the enemy to come in. You are reading the scripture. You need to understand. Because gate can be open continually for invaders. Why will God give you open door? Can we quickly go to it and then we close for now? They shall not be short day and night. For what reason? That men may bring to you the wealth of what? Of the Gentiles. Is there anybody for that? That is why your doors will be opened unto you. That the word of Gentiles shall be what? Shall be brought to you. It's not for one now. Am I communicating? So eh? you can just open a small shop. And then you are there. God will just tell the Gentiles. They have the money. Am I communicating? So yeah. Eh? And say so just say, how much are you selling this? Hey, it's five thousand. I said five thousand. How many do you have? Excuse me, I have ten. Were you able to get me more? Eh? I need hundred. And you have somebody who has that hundred. And you say, I'm going to buy from you. And out of the 5,000, maybe your own gain is 1,000. Have you not got it the, the Gentiles worth? Am I complicated? Eh? It can be an idea that come your way. If you come your way and you just brought the idea, the whole world is not made of Christians. The whole world is not made of Christians. Those of you who ask too, do you have Christians? All your students are students. Are they all Christians? Is that correct? Eh? You have not seen somebody who is not a Christian and they know you are a Christian and they said, this child is coming to your house, to your school. You have not seen it before. You are not, you are, people are not talking to me. You have not experienced something. We went to we went to visit somebody and pray for that person because he got to a new house. And locked the alone that. And then I say, my wife, let us pass through this place. And I say, somebody say, mommy, mommy, mommy. I say, mommy, who know you here again? And the man came out. I said, the man of the moon, he came out. And who told you, oh, thank you for caring for us. Thank you for this. Thing. I said, where do you know this woman, this man again? This woman again? You know what he said? He said, if I said. When he said, we have, we have, we have, he said, it's our mommy in school. It's our proprietor. I said, proprietress. From where to where? How many kilometers? He said, if I said. If this boy, or see the girl or a boy. A girl, if this girl will make things in life, he must go to that school. So I'm not talking of 419. That Gentiles, you go and break their doors and say, because God said, the Gentiles. No! That thing you are doing, am I communicating? Idea, connection that you need among Gentiles, they will come to you. Am I communicating? 
He said, your doors will be open what? Continually. They shall not be shut day or what? Or night. The men that men may bring to you the what? The wealth of the Gentiles and their kings in what? In procession. The kings. Men of honor. Men of substance. Men of power. Men of you have not gotten to that stage. By the power of God, God will raise you up. I say God will raise you up. Oh, I say God will raise you up. Divine connection will come your way. Why? Because your doors are open world continuously. And people will envy you. And nobody there. Allow us to see there. And one lola will look at when you're part of the game. Because your doors are open continually. Look at the provision. He said, For the nation and kingdom which will not serve you shall perish. It, it, it means that you be the light of people. God will make you king. Wherever you are, you are a leader. You will be the head. There will be no competitor. The issue of praying for your enemy to die is no longer there. He said, Thou preparest a table before me, what? In the presence of my enemy. If they refuse, if they refuse, to even be your own Bible says they will perish. So it is better for them to bow down before you. Stop fighting your mother in law. Stop fighting your father in law. Stop fighting your uncle. Am I communicating with somebody? The most, if you actually you enjoy the mercy of God, what you think you are doing that is not right will be acceptable to them. And say, the glory of Lebanon shall come to you. Can somebody say amen to that? He said, the cypress and the pan and the bus tree together to beautify your place. And the place of my sanctuary. Listen to this and respond. And I will make the place of, of feet your, your feet glorious. And also the son of those who afflicted you shall come bow down before you. And all those who despise you shall fall prostrate at the soles of your feet. And they shall call you the city of the Lord. Zion of the only one of Israel. In the mighty name of Jesus. But what attract this Answer me. What attract this? Divine what? Mercy. Can you be on your feet this morning? I think you have already done. The remaining two I will discuss to you next time. That you need to cry for divine mercy. You need to cry for divine mercy. That will nullify those causes upon your life. The bondage that you have been carried from birth. In your Next, spiritual needs to be broken by divine mercy. And not only that, some of us we have found ourselves in a closed door avenue. If you leave that job today, you don't even know what to do again. The present situation has made many people useless. For a man who enjoys divine mercy, there's nothing he will lay his hand upon that he wants. He will prosper because he is walking under what? Divine mercy that give him open what? Open doors. Let me say, let, let me say it in to Yoruba. One or nine, Dima, and the king. Dima, Dima, Laja. You understand what I'm saying? When you are carrying divine mercy, open doors for you. To what you do, I'm not to go. Sorry, le. I have seen people complaining of where they are living. 
you don't know what you are. Once I will be done, babe. I have seen people complain about the work they are doing. That is distraction and diversion of the real thing. By understanding this morning, what are you supposed to cry for? Oh, listen to me, what are you supposed to cry for? What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Can you open your mouth and start to pray right now? Whatsoever. Causes that is upon your life. Divine mercy has to to nullify it. Are you praying? Those that I'm looking at, are you praying? As you listen to me, are you really praying? Prayer is a business, prayer is a work. Prayer is the way by which you can draw heavenly resources. Prayer has the longest arm to draw resources from heaven. Stop shifting blame. No work passing. Don't fight your wife again. Don't fight your husband again. Don't fight anybody again. You need divine mercy. You need divine mercy. Why am I born into this family, girl? You don't have to go. You don't have to go. Why am I a native? Why am I in Nigeria? Who told you? You may be anywhere. In the world, flow with me can learn it. If your life is destitute, if your life is test destitute of divine mercy, those me can flow will not flow to you. But if you are living in a dry land and you are a carrier of divine mercy, oh, that divine mercy will turn it around for your favor. And resources will be drawn to you. Men from far will come to you and bless you. Open your mouth wherever you are listening to me. That Lord, I need divine mercy. Divine mercy. See, that open doors continually. That no one can shut. Oh, I need it. In the mighty name of Jesus, I need divine mercy that will notify those causes working upon my life. I need divine mercy that will, that will qualify me. For the evil judgment that is working against my life. Maybe the one that are genetic. Maybe the one that I have done in ignorance. Maybe in actual or action on daily basis. Lord, I need your divine mercy. At this point in time, I need divine mercy. I believe you really know what you are doing. I believe you know that you need that. There is no level you cannot reach if you get divine mercy. You only need divine mercy. It's an essential trademark for a blessed life. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your prayer and fasting be of help to you right now. By the way you pray, that Lord, I need your divine mercy. I need it, O God. I have seen it. I have seen it. If for this two reasons, if for this two reasons, I need divine mercy. It must come my way. I must be a carrier of divine mercy. In the mighty name of Jesus, the power of God will rest upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus, Rebo Kosinda, Rema Kakasondo, Rumbo Kosinda. Thank you, Father. In Jesus, mighty name, we are prayer. With the resounding amen. I speak to your life. That divine mercy that triumph over judgment. We start to be in abundance to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
Whatsoever you may have inherited, acquire, introduce to your system, into your destiny, because of your action and inaction, now it becomes possible to you. I speak to your life right now by divine mercy, they are nullified. I say they are nullified. I say they are nullified. I say it again, they are nullified. You are set free. I say you are set free. I say you are set free. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. We bless you, worship you. You will continue to enjoy divine mercy. Help we come your way. In the mighty name of Jesus, wherever you go, men of honor will celebrate you, will be attracted to you. Your doors will be open. 24 7 in the mighty name of Jesus. Through divine mercy, no power will shut down your door. Doors of opportunity will be opened unto you. Those grant and basis of prosperity, of blessing, and righteousness that you have lost. Let it be restored to you in full right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. The Lord will visit you in a special way. In the day of your visitation, you will not miss out. In the mighty name of Jesus, carry the mark of divine mercy wherever you go. The Lord will forgive you. He will be compassionate. He will be compassionate towards your case in the mighty name of Jesus. Today, your case and your fight will be open for God's attention in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We bless you. We give you the glory in Jesus. Mighty name, we are prayer. Can you with your hands to God and appreciating God? He said he said his word and he led them. And he delivered them from their destruction. You need to make use of this word. I say you should praise God. Let him hear your voice. Let him hear your voice. Let him hear your voice. You are not a new man. You are going to make a restitution where necessary. Because you cannot, you cannot afford to be carrying causes upon your life. The word of God must come to pass. I believe you are singing to praise Him. Sing 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 to praise Him. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayer. Amen. Shall we bring our offering? It's your offering is to worship the Lord. Your, wash, your offering is to appreciate Him. Your tithe is a sign that you know you didn't get the wealth by your own power. It's a sign that you want to continue to enjoy divine mercy. Don't add to your problem. Let the act of God be generous to you by appreciating him with your offering to advance the kingdom his kingdom is not eating your naira and cobble neither is fully eat your pan sterling but his work must continue like we always say without deceiving you Money matters, matters. God will not, perhaps God will not have asked Solomon 
to ask whatever he wants. Perhaps if he has not offered that 1,000 pound offering unto the Lord. God told Abel and Cain. Out of what they have that they should make a sacrifice unto me. And you know what Abel did? His offering was acceptable before the Lord. And that's the reason why 